results are not fanciful. Reaching into every household in the land, they take the need home. They are actual and real. Okay, you know, you reached out, and, or, or how are we going? How are we going about on this? Starting off, we're just going hot. Yeah, I'll start it. I'll wait here. Hell yeah. <laughs> okay, so we are here with my brother Jared, uh, the biggest conspiracy theorist I know. Hello, who, everybody. Who you guys might remember from the flat Earth video, where we were joking about it, but also like. Pretty crazy. Uh, I, I mean, it's hard to joke about things that, you know, are that crazy, though. You know what I mean? It's like, they're jokes, but they make you think a little bit. So, okay, the simulation theory. I thought I knew a lot about it, and then I was texting with my brother, and I realized, oh, I don't know shit. <laughs> because some of the things he was saying was uh, making my mind blow. Um, I think most people know the base idea, right? Which is we're all living in some sort of simulation. It's all like a matrix. It's all computers. It's not real. And maybe at some point we can break our way out of it. I think most people know that. I think that's the idea that most people have, yes. That we're being controlled and nothing is really our choice. It's all kind of predetermined, right? On that note, one interesting thing is when I did a video on the flat earth with a gentleman named Mark Sargent, who's one of the big figureheads of the flat earth, I had brought up to him that I wanted to explore the simulation theory. And he told me that the simulation theory is the ultimate. Once you land on the simulation theory, everything correlates, nothing else matters, and it will just suck everything out of you if you if you allow it to. To get into it, just to lay the groundwork, the original simulation theory was brought out in 2003 by Nick Bostrom, and he presented three scenarios of likelihood. The first scenario is human beings never reach a point in civilization where they're technologically advanced enough to create a simulation that feels real. The second is we do end up getting advanced enough to make the technology for a simulation, but either we have no interest in pursuing it, or we end up destructing the planet with nuclear weapons before that could ever happen. Um, the third, we're in a simulation. So when you hear like Elon Musk talk about it, I think he popularized it for a lot of people. And he says that the chances of us being in base reality is like one in a billion. The odds that we're in base reality is one in billions. So, Tell me what's wrong with that argument. Is the answer. The last 40 years of technology has gone from a computer chip the size of a house to a computer chip that you can hide on your fingernail. Why bother typing your contact information into another person's phone when they can get the information from a microchip on your fingernail? So obviously, I, I, it doesn't seem as though we'll never be able to create a simulation. I think if anything right now, the world is proving that they want a simulation. Now, if I'm in a loud place and I want to share my Instagram or my social media, I say, scam my finger. <laughs> oh, okay. right. oh, every the goal. fucking year. Like, I feel like when I first heard about the simulation theory, everybody's like laughing about it. And now, when you start talking about it, oh yeah, have you seen The Matrix? So I'm like, okay, people are, I mean, even like Instagram. I was looking on Instagram filters and some of them are created by kids. And they're so in depth and crazy and like putting things on your face and get, putting monsters like, you know. And I was like, okay, so clearly technology is advancing very fast, even to when Instagram first started. So the reality of us getting to a point where somebody could create a simulation, it doesn't seem that far away at all. No, I mean, if you were to base it off of technology's exponential growth in the past 10 years, we're probably very close to it. We went from Nintendo in the early 90s. Now we're at a point where you can pretty much be inside the world in Nintendo. Oh, you, you can literally put on goggles like, and you're there. Yeah, like that game that people were playing where you put on the VR and you think you're like walking out of a building on a plank and you think you're gonna die and people actually like broke their TVs because it was so real for them. So, okay, say we are in a simulation, which- Let's assume we are. Okay, we're assuming we're in a simulation. What is it? So, to keep going, I, I think it's important. There's a quote by a quantum physicist named Werner Heisenberg. We're gonna keep talking about the universe. I think it's a very important quote to bring up. He says that not only is the universe stranger than you think, it's stranger than you can think. So... Ew. Like, <laughs> That's too real. Yeah. Ew. 
Okay, this is crazy. So last night I did my first remote viewing test. My name is Lori Williams. My strongest thing is that we teach remote viewing. Remote viewing. Remote viewing. Remote viewing, also known as ESP or psychic phenomenon. How is remote viewing used today? I've been tasked to help locate murderers and to unravel clues and missing persons. And also the CIA was involved in the research. How do the American military use remote viewing? Mainly to sort of locate intelligence secret sites and things like this. And they ended up using remote viewing for 15 to 20 years. If you had an ability to be able to remotely perceive stuff any place in the world, that could be an extraordinary intelligence source. And if it was working, why did the government decide to cancel the program in the mid-90s? I think they canceled it because they had so much more sophisticated ways of spying on people nowadays. And I don't want to give away what it was because it's part of the class, so I don't want to give it away for you, but I got it pretty much accurate, which is not expected. I did not think that was going to happen. Then she gave me a list of target practices. So I chose this one. And I went through the whole process of writing down the number. I don't want to give it all away because you should just take the class, but I went through the whole process. So I didn't know what the picture was. I just only knew the file image number, which is just a random number. I wrote down cement, gray, rough, gravel-like, man-made steel, small steel, small plants, sucker-like plants, like round, blue, the color blue, trees. And then I just, I put dizzy, uh, wheels, dry, daytime. So those were what I was getting from my subconscious. And then look at the picture. What? <laughs> Cement, gravel, man-made small steel, small round plants, blue, daytime, dry, dizzy, because it's turned, wheels. Like what? This is so next level. <laughs> like, I really did not think this was gonna work. Okay, I just did another one. And some of the things I put, blue, green. I put burning, underlined a bunch of times, with orange glare, small sunlight, orange glare. Like I just kept putting that. I put wet feeling, and then I put cracking sound, sounds of cracking. So here's a picture. A birthday cake with a candle being lit. Green, blue, burning, small orange glowing sun wet, cracking sound. Okay, I'm gonna keep doing this for a couple hours and I'm gonna see how good I can get at this. And then I think I'm gonna try to test it out on um, some people in real life. <laughs> this is so scary, oh my God. This is nuts. Oh. Okay, are you guys ready to uh, see if I can read your minds? I more so want you to predict my future. Oof! <laughs> oh no! You don't want that. <laughs> is it bad? Is it dark? What age do I die? Is it soon? Oh my no, god! No! Oh my it. god! 45! Oh, like, <laughs> is it a video game? Am I some alien blob, you know, sitting in some hovering chair, like, playing my life? Or is it, like, a flashback? Because I've heard of that, like the ancestor simulation, where it's like, it's like a simulation of the entire history of the world. It's kind of like a history book. Like you can go through the simulation and watch certain events happen. Pretty much. Okay. Exactly like that. So it's almost in the future, we want to understand our past. So we create simulations that we can relive the past in. A point would be basically to learn from the past and to put ourselves through as many scenarios as humanly possible. So like the simulation that we're in right now could be ran a million times, you know, and over the course of the million times, they're going to learn lessons in each one, uh, different probabilities, things of that nature. I mean, maybe at one point people just become so bored they want to relive the past. Whoa. You know? So let's just assume that we are in a simulation. Um, okay. How do I explain this? Okay, here's what we're gonna do. So I need you guys to go on the internet, get a picture of a random location, something that you guys don't tell me. Anywhere on the globe? Anywhere. Okay. So you're gonna print out the picture, then you're gonna think of a six digit code, six digit number that can be totally meaningless, totally pointless, it doesn't really matter. You're gonna write it down on an envelope and you're gonna fold up the picture and put it inside. You're gonna tell me what the number is and I'm gonna do a remote viewing session where I predict what's gonna be on the picture. And then I'll come inside and see if I was right. 
this might not work. <laughs> But so I, what's the conspiracy that you can read pictures from Google? So let's use an example. Suppose your friend has gone to Europe and you decide one day you're going to tune into where she is. So you do, you tune in and you get a picture of her in a lake in a rowboat with an island in it. Okay. How did you get that? So I'm going to print it, seal it inside the envelope. Do we get to mail it to you? And write it. <laughs> <laughs> do we get to you? Yes. See you in five days. I'm going to fly to Colorado. You guys mail it to me. <laughs> I How like sending people race? letters. If we someone sent me a letter, I think I would. Because <laughs> <laughs> okay. maybe just hand it to me. <laughs> okay, but do you need charades or anything in the background? Should I be going like. <laughs> Doing anything like that? No, don't give me any hints. Okay. It has to be 100 percent real. Okay. I know we're laughing now, but if you do this, I'm gonna shit my pants. <laughs> <laughs> uh, perfect. Oh Alright, have fun. Ryan. Okay, have fun. Is it everybody's simulation or is it per person? Like am I in my own simulation and all you guys are NPCs? Is that what it is? I don't believe so. Okay. I believe that we are in a mass group simulation. And my personal belief is we all share a collective consciousness. We're all tapped into the same simulation. That's why you enter a room and you feel energy. Um, and not everybody though. Like not everybody is, is tapped in quite the same. We've all asked the universe for a sign. You know? Give me a sign. Once you accept a sign that the universe gives you, you speak universe now. Everything is a sign and you live synergistically with the universe and the world almost tries to train you to not go with your gut to not believe your instincts what about route 66 i feel like there's, there's just so too much, much going to... on yeah. i was thinking like the palm spring windmills like a windmill farm i always what about like a chicken farm i mean you can do that okay what about uh, the white house oh, okay the white house as in the white house no, the White House is in the Brown House. What was it you meant the White House that you love in Colorado that we drive by all the oh, time? Oh, I do I love that White House yeah, a lot. So Every time I drive there, so I'm like, seriously. <laughs> there's this house like on the side of the street, and I'm like, whoever lives there, they found the right sugar daddy girl. Good for you. Last time we did one of these videos, there was an ulterior motive, so I never know what he's up to, so I'm trying to think of like, is this what he's actually doing, or is he tricking us, and we're gonna get shook by something else? It's not well, he's been taking the course, so I'm pretty sure this is the game. You never know what to expect. You don't. I show up here and you can expect this. I told you. I don't know how the numbers play into this. I think we're getting bamboozled. I think he's getting No, he really- What if he ships us? What if he actually has like a teleportation device and he ships us to the White House and then we're stuck there? Kind of cool. We can help Joe. Oh, well, I'm not helping anyone. I'm like scared. I would help. Mm. Well, these so are so cute. There are certain things behind it, right? So there has to be a creator. There has to be the ultimate programmer behind this. There has to be rules. There has to be a system in place that governs the simulated experience. You have laws that govern society that keep you in line while you're here. Physics. Uh, the natural law, gravity, things of that nature, to bring some kind of order to the existence. And the next thing would be the player. So who are the players in this scenario? The way I perceive it is, the brain would be the player. So there's an old theory that inside of your brain is somebody sitting in a chair controlling the body, right? So let's say the player is the brain, the character that you're playing is your body. Instead of a remote control and you have like all these buttons to press, we have five senses that we use to experience the world around us. So these are our interfaces to the simulation. The land that we're in, you know, you're playing GTA 5 or whatever it is, and it's all based in Los Angeles, you know, if, if the system would be Los Angeles. But for us, the system is the whole universe. And we understand the Earth, but the programmer probably just did a bunch of like, Space bar, space bar, space bar, and just kept going out and out further, 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 further. You know, it's probably just stars, and then you just extend, 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 extend. Make it so far out there that we'll never be able to get to it. You know? Like, when I hear a voice in my head of it saying, like, oh, don't go here, oh, do this, oh, you know, is, the, is my conscience, the voice in my head, is that actually the person playing my game? 
A simple answer, yes, I guess. In, in the terms of what we're discussing right now, yes. That person that's in your brain, sitting on that chair, controlling what you're doing through your five senses, is ultimately telling you what to do. How did you get that? I guess that would be the case. We have to kind of just accept that as fact. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, like I said, Shane even has his back to us. See? Okay. First, you want to? Can we seal it and lick it? Sure. You put your DNA on it. Yeah. Oh, conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> You, you wrote numbers on the envelope? Yeah. Okay, let me see. We all chose two. Shame. I think he's focused. Oh, do you want to see the numbers? Do you want the envelope? Okay, what's the number? The number is 645399. Okay, you guys can go inside. You can go back inside here. Should we watch him? Should we watch him? <laughs> no, no. My name is Shane, yeah. Yeah, this is suspicious. This is suspicious. <laughs> I don't trust this process at all. As a woman in my 24 year old life, I've learned that you don't trust men. When they say something, there's always an ulterior motive. <laughs> What would you do if he guessed it perfectly right? If he guessed it perfectly on the first try and he comes in here with a picture of a White House with a little fountain, I will drop dead to the floor and say, I'm done. <laughs> so in regards to the creator, I I've done a lot of research. One thing that really interests me is monuments, like the pyramids of Giza, the pyramids in Teotihuacan, how they all seem to be aligned somehow. And if we go back in time to the earliest records that man ever left us, which would be caveman drawings, right? Early cavemen, they drew Orion. And a lot of us are familiar with Orion's belt, the constellation. There's three very prominent stars in the sky, but the whole constellation depicts a hunter, or Orion the hunter. So what would motivate cavemen to paint something on their walls? Um, it's probably an homage to their creator, I would imagine. And the creator even taught them how to hunt because if you look up at Orion, it looks like somebody hunting with a bow and arrow. Whoa, and that's crazy. Let's just say that Orion is the ultimate programmer. He's the coder, the ultimate creator. He gave us a lot of clues and it's really up to us to figure these things out, right? So for the cavemen, it might've been very obvious. There was no danger of cavemen knowing about the simulation because they didn't even really understand it. Then you move further throughout time and you start with the pyramids. So the pyramids of Giza, if you align them perfectly, they go right with Orion's belt. There's the pyramids of Tio to Huacan. That aligns perfectly with Orion's belt. And if you take the measurements, this is the crazy part to me, if you take the measurements of the Great Pyramid of Giza and you take the perimeter and you times it by the same number that you would times the height by, you can get the land mass and the total circumference of the Earth. So the story that we're told is that slaves in Egypt built these crazy monuments that could never be reproduced, right? 2.3 million up to 70 ton pound solid granite rocks that they put perfectly into place and that they're supposed to just be tombs for mummies, you know? But how did these people know the exact circumference of the planet? Oh, this is making me sick. I mean, <laughs> this I don't, is too much. I don't, I don't even understand how you can decide how much the land mass of the planet weighs. The Great Pyramid was built the level of technological sophistication far in excess of anything that we have today. So just having the idea that these ancient Egyptians did this is pretty gnarly. But what if they were already here? What if these monuments were actually put on Earth as legends for us to decode throughout time. Like a fucking, like a task in a video game? Like a Rubik's Cube. And once we open up Pandora's box, something is gonna expose itself to us. Cause you know they say there's levels to the game, right? I'm gonna throw up, <laughs> this is freaking me out. Like, the Great Pyramid is essentially located at the center of the world's landmass. But if you look in front of the pyramids of Giza, which are immaculately built, they could be seen from outer space because they were so reflective. In front of them, there's three smaller pyramids. And it's believed that those are actually the attempts that the Egyptians had at trying to recreate what they saw as the greatest thing ever built. 
right? Okay. And the pyramids of Giza are by far the most popular pyramids. But in Mexico, the Teotihuacan, at one point it was a city that housed about 170,000 people. Uh, another area where they had three pyramids. And if you look it up, and I can actually show you, the layout of this town of Teotihuacan matches pretty much exactly to what a motherboard on a computer looks what? like. What? It's pretty insane. That's what I believe. I believe that O'Brien is the ultimate coder and he gave us clues and there are people that are aware of this and they do not want us to find out. So they give us stories, you know? And even like in China, there's pyramids everywhere, but they cover them. They don't even allow it to be known that there's pyramids in China. In China, there's a huge pyramid. The size of Chinese pyramid is even greater than the Egypt's pyramid, and the number of pyramids is also larger. What? I didn't even know there was. Yeah, they planted grass fields over all the pyramids. Trees are planted, and it's covered by soil. So there's no pyramids there anymore. Chinese government never reveals the pyramid. Why? Because they're, they're hiding their history. Because if you want to control a population, the last thing you want them to have is the truth. Right? Okay. Well, it was really hard. I was getting a few specific things. Well, I have right here everything I was feeling about this place. So maybe show me the picture and I'll see if any of this connects with it. You could open the envelope if you would like. I'm scared. Of what? I don't you know. Think it's not I definitely want to do this one more time after this because I feel like I'm warming up. So the picture was of the White House. Fountain outside and a very obnoxious red flowers, but almost like it looks like a big red circle. So this is what I meant when I said random. So man-made. I was getting a strong like something made out of wood. Wood. Bio, I was getting a strong something with water which there's a water fountain, so it's similar. Grass. A building with glass. Then I was getting polar ice white. So I was, I was seeing white, I was seeing white everything. And I'm like, okay. I didn't think it was snow. I didn't think it was, but I knew white. So I wrote down WHITE in all caps. And I was getting RED, like the color RED, I underlined it because I'm like, there's something RED here. RED. And I even wrote down TARGET, the store TARGET. If somebody's getting too analytical, then it's probably wrong. So let's say they're seeing a sharp metal spire and they say, oh, it's the Empire State Building. That's probably wrong. But it didn't feel like it. It felt like some kind of a symbol, which would be the red circle with the white in the center. That is pretty much the Target logo. The sharp metal spire is probably right. I mean, that's pretty crazy because this is the Target center. Yeah, yeah. this is white, and glass, man, water. Man. I mean, that's weird, right? Wow. Yeah, yeah. You're, I would say all those words are pretty specific specifically in this picture. Like there's nothing out of left pocket. So now that I'm kind of warmed up, let me do one more. And I feel like maybe I can actually nail it. Wow. Like nail it, nail it. Like I will say like, I'll throw out the exact place. Okay, we need to think of something new. Wow. That's really crazy. And the metaverse is... The metaverse, to my understanding, is just a virtual reality land uh, where once you put on these goggles, you're there. So let's start by exploring what different kinds of metaverse experiences could feel like. Everything that we experience in this base reality is simulated in the metaverse. Starting with the most important experience of all, connecting with people. go there, it's cryptocurrencies that you would use, you have art, your NFTs that you have, and in essence, that's what it all is. It's just all digital. They say that the ultimate goal is to figure out a way to download consciousness. 
Just like Google could finish a sentence for you, you know, or like Amazon knows to a 1% what their normal customer is gonna buy next. We all know that stores know things about us based on our shopping habits. Some say it went too far. An irate father asked a Target manager why his teenage daughter was receiving baby coupons in the mail. Turns out his daughter was pregnant and had told no one at all. Is this legal? Yes. Creepy. It's like they're downloading your consciousness right now every time you Google something. Every time you post something. Just like we all get weird alerts on our phone of things that we were thinking of but we never said out loud. Now, of course, we understand ads are tailored to us by the things we search. But I would notice that things that I never searched for will pop up and suggested ads and suggested videos for me. It's called telephonic communication where things, if you're walking through a store, it's almost like you hear something telling you you should look over here at a product. It's becoming so tapped in that now just our thoughts can translate into an ad on our phone, right? This next one is the one that really got me. Hey, remember that movie? I'm thinking to myself in my mind, to myself in my mind. Remember that movie? I'm thinking of a movie that came out over 25 years ago. And it was about these people who would morph into cats. There was no stars in this movie. I hadn't thought about this movie in over 25 years. I haven't mentioned this movie. I've never seen it advertised anywhere. Nothing. Just something that just came into my mind. And that's, what was the name of that movie? I'm thinking to myself. Sleepwalkers. That was it. Sleepwalkers. And just like that, the thoughts go on from my mind. We fall asleep. First thing in the morning, I get up. I get on YouTube. I'm scrolling through. The very first thing I see as I'm scrolling down YouTube. YouTube. Would you be interested in renting Sleepwalkers? This obscure movie from over 25 years ago that I have not seen, heard, or anybody mention. No one's caring about Sleepwalkers. Something's going on here. It gets so deep because it's a simulation that started, let's say Orion started it, but it's evolved into something completely different. It's like now the simulation has been hacked. It's been infiltrated. Um, you're gonna be able to send a text message just by thinking about moving your fingers. That's gonna be pretty amazing. This is how we'll all be interacting one day. Thanks, Michael. That was awesome. All right. I think he said like a place. Because if we draw a spaceship and he can only see storefronts, that's gonna be a disaster. <laughs> what if we did like an old wood roller coaster? What about one of those like big fair towers that you drop on? You could even just do that. Yeah, that actually is pretty good. Exactly. Okay, let's go play that. Stop that. <laughs> <laughs> There's certain theories and certain things that, for me, actually make the simulation seem realistic. I'm just waiting. Okay, fine. Has my DNA. There you go, Elon. There's our code. Like, the whole Mandela. Looney Tunes cartoon, right? Bang on, that's what we remember. Okay, you're wrong here. It's Looney Tunes. Don't no. ask me. Oh, yes! No. That was something a few years ago that everybody thought was stupid, and now everybody's like, wait a minute, this actually makes sense. The picture of the person, right? Right. Well, it's wrong. He doesn't have a monocle. What does he have instead? No monocle at all. Or even things that happen very randomly. You'll be talking to your friend and you'll say a word that's really random and then the song on the radio says the word or the TV says the word and you have that moment of like, whoa, you'll see a certain number a few times a day. Like I see 719 my birthday. I see it every day, like four times a day in different ways, a price tag somewhere, a time code somewhere. Or even when you voice memoed me about doing this video and we were talking about it. The simulation is just insane. When your voice memo finished playing, Ryland's podcast popped up and started playing at the exact point where he said, and then it all works out in their favor. Maybe it's all a fucking simulation. I mean, definitely. For sure, none of this is real. No. No. And I was like, okay, that's, the fuck was that? Well, that might have been me. Good timing, that was awesome. Dude, no bullshit. I just got an email for NFTs, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Connected. <laughs> or even all the videos on Reddit, like glitches in the matrix. The plane is hovering and not flying. And obviously, like, well, maybe the plane is just, the speed is, you know, it, maybe it's an illusion. But then there was these videos that I found. There was one where it was raining, but it was only raining in like a circle. Or people disappearing in the background on the news. Life news. 
Yeah. She disappeared. Clean. There was one video clip of this like guy, and he was filming outside of his bus, and there was a girl next to her car, and she was literally like a video game character that was broken. She was like doing the same movement with her camera over and over and over again, and it's like that could be a broken character in the simulation, or this one of a deer randomly being thrown by something invisible. So it's like all those things mixed with all our weird day-to-day -day, like deja vu moment. Is that moments of the simulation glitching? Or is that our players fucking with us? Okay. Let's see. Oh, did we lock it? We're so used to locking it. We accidentally locked you out. I really didn't want me to get the Come answer. <laughs> So I have a few specific guesses, which it probably won't be one of these, but maybe it'll be in this world. Okay. Uh, okay. My first initial thing that I instantly felt, but I think it's wrong, was like a spaceship or something. That was my first initial thing. Oh, <laughs> that is just crazy because, it, well, we thought about it. Yeah. She was like, because if we draw a spaceship and he can only see storefronts, that's going to be a disaster. <laughs> but then I was like, we can't do that because he's never going to get that. Space. Space. That is so weird. I literally wrote down space rocket ship. Rocket ship. Really? Wow. Yeah, yes. we were in here talking. That's why I asked that you weird. what was yeah. yeah. That is so weird. Okay, that's really weird. Okay, so it's not that. But no. I did get that, that At feeling. At first, okay. okay. That's really weird. And then my second thing that I started f seeing was like a carnival or something. So that was one of the things that I started feeling. What about one of those like big fair towers that you drop on? Okay. <laughs> Are you starting to be a believer? Uh, okay. Morgan? Uh, okay, go ahead. So my official guess is either a roller coaster, coaster. or like a theme park. Uh, and it could be more broad, it could be a theme park. Okay. Are we all dead? <laughs> Where is Where's the envelope right? Oh my god, where is the envelope? No, it's none of that. It's self-destructive. Oh my god. Oh my god. The glitch in the matrix, that, I, I think that would be the obvious. There's some, some kind of a glitch, maybe there's too much activity on the server um, if we're looking at it in a computer simulation sense. But what I like to think is these are signs from the creator to help us wake up. Like, look, you just experienced something crazy. How do you explain it? What would be the best way to explain this happening? It kind of feels like a video game. It kind of feels fake. It kind of feels like it's a simulation. Why don't you go with that thought, explore the notion, and where does it take you? Can the phones read my mind or are we in some simulation theory? Is this not reality? Unfortunately though, we live in a society that if you take that notion and you try to move on it, you're crazy, you're a lunatic because they don't want you to go against the narrative. The biggest threat to a controlling body is free thinkers. The last thing you want is anybody to be curious. Curiosity killed the cat. Because if you want to control a population, the last thing you want them to have is the truth. You want to be able to dictate everything that they think, right? So what you probably want to start with is around five years old or so, you probably want to be in a room full of other five-year-olds being told exactly what you should think about life, told the history, um, taught what's important, and then it'd probably be good to do that all the way up until you're an adult. Oh, right? my God. So okay. you're indoctrined into a system. And that's why I think a lot of people, um, like once they get to 20, 21, they, they almost have these breakdowns. And I think that's what we're really experiencing right now more than ever is people just waking up. And what method is this? Yeah, wow. Whoa. <laughs> okay. That, okay. But we have to go back. We have to, we have to tell him. What else do you know? So I put steel metallic. Steel. Metallic. I put blue. I was feeling the color blue, which oh, was uh, the whole sense. background. Screaming loud chaos. Wind in hair. 
Yes. That makes sense. Um, Ride Carnival Kids laughing. Purple seated chair, I didn't know what that meant. I wonder, we should Google to see what color chairs, wow. I mean, I haven't got to the because seat chairs, but look at the ambiance of the room when you walk in is purple. Whoa, like intense purple. Even the exterior at night, they light it purple. Wow, that is insane I, though. Sometimes the whole really roller cool. coaster thing blows my mind too, because well, we talked about that for so This is a version of a roller coaster. Yeah, still, and then, I'm still not on. I'm like really close. But, go back but you, they literally pulled up pictures of wooden roller coasters. We did. History. We pulled up more roller coasters than this. Yeah. This was just a last thought and we yeah. went, okay, like, we'll do this. Both. And yeah. I specifically said here, I specifically said at the end, cause I was like, I got a last minute just thought and then I shut it down. Watch. And it could be more broad. It could be a theme park. <laughs> wow, you had a oh, it's so weird that I got space. So well, you so got intense. all of the. I don't know, like space. I'm seeing a lot of space, so it could also be a rocket ship. But I'm gonna go with my gut instinct, which is roller coaster. what we were discussing. Are you gonna oh my gosh, that is so freaky. Do you want to view track one? Well, you probably know him the best. You probably have the most telepathy going on. Or you all could try it. Okay, I'm gonna do this a little different. This is not remote viewing. This is me seeing if I can get inside your guys' heads. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you're already there. <laughs> Here's what I'm gonna do. Write down this number, 072255. So basically what you wanna do is you wanna keep your conscious mind occupied. So that's, you know, automatic writing where psychics will like scribble randomly. The reason they're doing that is because they're trying to give their conscious mind something to do while their subconscious mind opens up. So if you want, you can do it however you want. You could just scribble, you little squiggles, whatever you wanna do. But every time a word comes to your head, even if it doesn't make any sense, write it down, write it down, write it down. And I'm gonna start sending you guys words to your heads. <laughs> okay. Remember, it's a place. Zero, seven. Two, two, five, five. <coughs> you know, the last thing I want to do is say, like, we're in a simulation and then people go out and start hurting each other and say, who cares? It's all a video game anyways. Like, clearly we don't want that to happen. So, is there a positive side to us being in a simulation? The fact that you say, you know, people knew we were in a simulation, they'd say, who cares? And it's all pointless and hurt each other. I think it would be the exact opposite. You know, I think the goal right now is to get everybody divided, to have people mad at each other, to have people confused, to have people looking for answers that only they could provide through their narrative. I think whoever coded the simulation gave us all insight that is pure. Our gut feeling is usually right. And the world enforces on us to not go with our gut and to make rational decisions and to be very calculated. And I think inherently we just know the truth. And if you accept that you're in a simulation, maybe you accept more things that come to your gut. Don't like try to think, just let it happen. Just like, boom, instinct, bird, right down, bird. First thing that comes to your head, what does it smell like? What does the place smell like? What are the colors? What are the colors in this place? If we all embrace the idea that we could be in a simulation, whether it be computer-based, video game, whatever the case may be, what that really does is it connects us, you know? Because we're all part of this together. Um, like one of my favorite theories is about Brahman, and it was this almighty being, the only creature to exist on the planet, 
and he got bored because he knows everything, nothing's exciting, nothing is surprising, there's no element of anything beyond existence. So he breaks himself into a billion pieces and those billion pieces gain their own consciousness and they go out and live their own lives with the end goal being at some point they'll all realize they came from one thing and they'll come back and they'll unite and they'll live in that existence as opposed to the separation. So I do think that the powers that be are fully aware that this is a simulation, that this is a determined existence, and they're playing their role as much as they can to be the main players that control everything. You know, absolute power corrupts absolutely. And the last thing the powers that be want is for the people to wake up. Are you ready for my results? Let's start with Mama. But it's somewhere warm. It just feels warm. Okay, yeah. yes. That's the biggest thing I feel is more. And I put a Mastro's because... A Mastro's is what? A steakhouse. Okay. Yes. Oh. I put Cheesecake Factory or McDonald's. A grave also came to my mind. Grave? I don't know why, like a graveyard. Whoa. I don't know why. Yes, this well, I've got like kind of three different themes going on. So I started, it almost felt like religious to me for yeah. a second. I wrote down church, I wrote down holy trinity, I wrote down priest, I wrote down temple. But then I moved into like, okay, maybe it's not church, maybe we're in Vegas. Like I was seeing like lights, casino. But then there's like something that's kind of dark about it. I wrote down three helps, I wrote down a lot of things. You got tacos, are you hungry? <laughs> 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 you all got close. Definitely the steakhouse, the warm, your whole thing about church, Vegas, that all correlates, a bunch of years correlated for sure. Um, and you definitely uh, were picking up the vibe. <laughs> One of you try it's, one? Well, you probably know him the best. You probably have the most telepathy going on. You for sure. Whoa. Why? You won. That's, <laughs> wow, I'm a genius. Yeah. Especially yeah. now. I don't if you need to bookings, be. contact. <laughs> I feel like everybody would be happier if they all knew that we are all connected. And yeah, we're literally all a part of the same simulation. So let's, you know. I mean, we are. The only thing separating any of us is land and water, you know? We're all on the same planet. We all are born, we all die, we all have wants, we all have needs, we all want love. We want all these things and it's like, why do they make us feel so divided? I think the more people that accept, whether it's a simulation or we're in, in, in a world where we're being controlled and they're over it, the better. Because that means that we could actually join forces and we can live the existence that was intended for us. Whoever created this, I believe, put us here to further evolve the creation. Not to devolve to a point of depression and misery and, and for, just for a few people to be to be happy, you know? Um, so that's what I like. I, I think the simulation theory could unite us. Yeah, the, to me it's nothing but positive. And you think Orion created all this? I think the simulation that we're experiencing, yes, Orion makes the most sense to me. Now, who created Orion? And who created, who created Orion? <laughs> and who created, who created, who created Orion? I don't know. Maybe the creator of the simulation put us all in here with the goal of creating a simulation that creates its own simulation. You know? <laughs> I think my brain just, I mean, I mean, the person controlling my brain just died. That was so crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good without using any actual remote viewing. You mean, I have all my squiggles. <laughs> like, yeah, you're you're like, to me, the spirits. You're like, all of that work to get me to Cheesecake like, Factory. Oh, yeah. There is, I did do some research today on the other side of the conversation, which is like people who are against it. And there are a lot of people who think it's really dangerous because you're, you're opening yourself up to evil spirits <gasps> that could come in. Is there a, a dark side to remote viewing? Um, and attached to your no, subconscious? Which is like the scariest place oh, to have something. I'm sold down. against this. Take back my scribbles. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're like opening yeah. yourself up to that realm yeah. of 
thing. Here you go, it's all done now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there is all sorts of stuff going on in this house still though, because last night, my computer kept making the sound. You know when you plug your computer in and it makes that little like <laughs> sound? Oh yeah. It was doing that all night. Anyway. Maybe that's why you kept feeling brave. A grave also came to my mind. Really? I don't know what, like a graveyard. Maybe you were tapping into it. To what? What if I have a dead spirit attached to me? Because I've been feeling real low lately, like real low. And I've been feeling really weirdly happy. What if mine left and went to you? But then there's like something that's kind of dark about it. I wrote down three helps. No, don't even go there. Yeah, let's let's not. not go there. What if Shades goes? You have been back afraid to me. At all. Maybe I'll get some creative, like genius vibes. She hasn't when I think of Shane, I think of like kind of like not an evil genius, but like. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, I picture you like in like a little coat, like concocting some things like <laughs> on your computer. Emphasis on genius, and not emphasis on evil. He's right in the future. Maybe. What if Shane's evil on us? Now I'm. I've had too much. <laughs> Maybe it's a sign that we should go to the cheesecake factory. <laughs> yeah. I guess we have to go to the Cheesecake Factory. Mm, I, now we get it. That's all it means, Shane. Okay, you're on speaker. But okay. we're walking over. So I was also wondering why I was feeling space so much. And I just Googled it. So Hollywood Tower of Terror is now the Guardians of the Galaxy ride. Is that something to do with space? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Galaxy. Space. Okay, okay, so this is our image if you want to get a final closer look. I'm gonna be honest, if I spent my whole life dedicating to be the president, well four years, I'd want a bigger fountain than that. <laughs> I would ask for some upgrades, but that's why I'm not in politics. The only reason, huh? <laughs> is this my simulation? Is it all of our simulations? Like when you guys leave my house and you guys drive away, do you not exist anymore? Like only what's in my vision exists, like a computer game. Like when you're going through, you know, Animal Crossing and as you're going through the, the building start to appear and stuff. Is it like that or is that not the simulation? Yeah, the only things that need to be rendered are the things that you're looking at. So if, like right now, we're filming in this room, so what's on the other side of that wall? It don't matter, we can't see it. It's Riley right now, he's in the bedroom. Is he not there? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, he can be.